<coughs> hey guys, Harry here, back with another Brickley and Vlog, a little bit of bonus footage uh, from Friday's video. Um, had this left over, some more pick and dip footage and just some head cam. Just doing a bit of bit of front tip, bit of pick and dip. I'm going to um, gonna try lay a bit different on head cam. When I'm recording head cam, I might do some traditional. Um, I've not really actually tried laying these bricks proper proper traditional putting grooves in the spread and perping the brake I might try I might try like a, uh, a traditional without grooves in the spread and then perping it a few different ways just for head cam so you guys see how I do it um, yeah so today's video I've got a topic this is just going to be purely a voiceover so a bit like my older style videos um, it's going to be a you know a bit it can be for you know um, you know, seasoned bricklayers, but improvers and apprentices, it applies to also. Um, the fastest way i found to improve, or the, one of the best organic ways to improve, is by filming yourself. So, if you do end up getting a head cam or getting <coughs> an action cam of some sort, um, just film yourself laying bricks. Um, if you, even if you set it up with your phone on a pack of bricks or something, when you're running something in or you're building something, You'll find the best way you'll find to improve is just by re watching yourself lay bricks and watching yourself build something, whether it's block work, brick work, and you'll uh, you can watch any inefficiencies in your movement. You can watch how you do things, how to improve. You can also um, what I do with a lot of these videos, I use them as mental reference points. So when I'm on the job, I'll say something on a video and then watch it back to remember what I said or to remember what my thought process was at that point. Um, like on this, on the last video, I saw where I made a mistake. You guys don't won't have seen uh, one of these mistakes, but obviously there was a mistake. I didn't leave my uh, bricks uh, rack back for the lintel, which obviously is an obvious mistake. That's, that's something I'd have, to I'd have realized straight away. Um, but uh, another mistake is when I was telling you guys I was going to pick up uh, you know, five mil for the soldiers uh, over the lintels. I didn't say, I, I forgot to say that you've got to tighten down them five mil on your top course, um, you know, as not to get too high on your gauge. Because uh, one thing I didn't mention in the last video that I wanted to sort of get off, get out in the YouTube sphere and get off my chest a little bit, because uh, I like to th formulate my thoughts through these videos. <clears throat> and if I say something in a video, I'll remember it. Whereas if I just keep it to myself, sometimes I'll completely forget what my thought process was and I'll maybe make an even bigger mistake. Um, and that you've got to be aware of your gauge, of obviously, of your house. So, for instance, this this house is uh, up to four, 32 course of bricks. And I only say that because a lot of guys can quickly add, you know, 32 courses up in your head, you know, if you've got decent maths. Uh, you can do it with a calculator, but it's two meters four hundred to the underside of the joist. So on a drawing, that's U slash S joist underside. So that's the masonry height um, for anyone uh, who doesn't realise, because there's the, there's there's terminologies on drawings that can be misleading. Even if you know what you're on about, they can still throw you off. And what I've got to realise is. <laughs> Uh, my brickwork's got to be as close to that as it can, and um, obviously your blockwork and brickwork uh, obviously needs to be the same height. That's why I always work from my face side first, and then when I'm doing my blockwork, I don't have to uh, worry about you know getting my blockwork too high on gauge, which is a common thing a lot of gangs do on these uh, joist lifts. Is they'll do the blockwork first, and they'll have an apprentice running in or whoever, and they'll get a little bit high on the blockwork. Um, and then they'll have to pick the brickwork up and then you gauge from, you know, you gauge from damp to floor is 30, 40 mil. Uh, whereas, um, <coughs> if you, if you go off your brickwork, you normally have no, uh, no problem there. Also, there's one, um, there's one thing that in some firms you've got to be aware of. I'm not sure if it is the case where I'm working, but... <laughs> The stairs sometimes in houses becomes a set height, a set uh, pre-built at a set height or a set measurement. And if you get too high, high on your gauge, your stairs won't fit. Um, obviously, if you, obviously if the slab's a bit high, and you have been gauging off your brickwork, you're probably already going to be uh, have some tolerance there. 
uh, whereas so uh, for instance say your slab can be easily 10 mil or 5 or 10 mil um, higher than your brickwork um, you know even if your brickwork's 5 or 10 mil high on gauge to your floor you'll still be all right you know um, I suppose there is some tolerance for these stairs that go in I'm not a joiner I couldn't tell you from first hand experience uh, I don't know the measurements for them or anything but you know if you're within 10 15 mil the general the general tolerance on building sites is around 10 15 mil I would have thought uh, NHB standards I've had a look on the website and uh, I'm sure it says a lot of brickwork it's about within 10 to 15 millimeters on a lot of masonry work so you know as long as you're within that gauge height you know you but there's one thing also you can do is what I'm gonna do after next video because I laid that top course without grinding down uh, five mil to make it a thinner bed joint I'm, I'm gonna have to take those 20 bricks off um, but I'll I'm gonna recheck my datums again so I'll check uh, which I didn't mention what I didn't mention it last video but um, you can check your datums again at, at basically your best time probably to check is at head of frame height so head of your door uh, head of your patio door head of your windows um, because as you saw I cleared my frames by you know good couple of mil um, I could have been maybe tighter to those frames maybe it was a bit more lenient on gauge but there's uh, you've got to be aware sometimes as well that your frames can come a bit bigger to gauge than the actual um, window height so that is something you've also got to consider a lot of um, the windows especially on this side I think it's it's probably more of an issue if you're building windows that come in that aren't in check uh, because you've got to make sure if you're setting your brickwork out you've got to know the exact former size so it'll slide in nice and easy because the former sits um, sits in you know the brickwork sits behind the former whereas uh, windows that are in check obviously the windows sit between the skins of brick and block so um for instance on that on on the, this job we're on now a 685 window opening on the measurement isn't isn't in effect what you should set your windows to uh, the window form has come at 735 so as you can see straight away there that's a 50 mil 50 mil difference in window opening and what you've got to do is you've got to take an happy medium of a of a seven fifteen, so you you go in thirty mil over your uh, over your actual window opening measurement, and and you're actually going twenty mil under the actual frame size. So it's a bit a bit in the middle to get a nice a nice fit up these window formers in check. Um, you can actually go to the actual frame measurement because I think there's a tolerance of like ten fifteen mil each side, at least ten mil each side of a window in check so they do give you that bit of tolerance where they can stick mastic to but it's always nice to get your your former flush with your brickwork um, you know that's the goal uh, also um, you know frame heights as well they can come high as well um, so you th there's always things to be aware there but if you can try and keep as close to your gauge to underside a joist which on this house is uh, 32 course, which is 2.4. Um, you know, you shouldn't go far wrong. Uh, but obviously, you know, if you're within 10 mil or so, 10 or 15 mil of that, and all corners of your house are the same gauge. You know, if you if you're gonna be, you know, if you're gonna be 10 mil high, make sure the whole house is 10 mil high. So don't just go 10 mil high in one corner and leave the rest of the brickwork gauge. You've got to make sure everything levels. Uh, I saw a video. I saw a comment in one of my last videos, uh, talking about laser level. They're about hundred quid with a, you know, a bit like Charlie Collison uses. There's something I'm going to probably invest in uh, at a later date, um, just because I've already got a skill so I just bought. You haven't seen me use because of my chest, obviously. Um, and I'm just expanding my Dewalt Ranger tools at the moment. I've got Dewalt. I've got Dewalt Combi Drill and Impact Driver, which. That combi drill I use is probably one of the best bits of kit I've uh, best bits of power tools I've ever I've ever, I've ever used. Um, I find it even more handy than a skill saw because when you're just drilling joints out, you can use them for all sorts of application. Like you saw me putting up uh, the, the levels uh, up the window formers or up the window reveals, should I say? This is probably the one of the one of the advantages you have 
when you're building window uh, windows in check um i thought i'd answer a answer a few questions that people may have as why i use so many profiles and take away so many plum points and because these concrete bricks they're very floaty you, you'll have a hard time building these freehand um any sort of corners so i like to put a profile up and run everything streamline everything all the way through the house where i can um it just takes away the error. Uh, I do go around and check my reveals with a level afterwards to make sure all the bricks are touching. They're all running nice and plumb. Um, but it is something that you know I've had to do because of th this this site's material. Um, usually I'd build a lot more freehand, but these bricks don't really allow you to do so um, because of they're just so unstable to lay with. <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing. What I'm doing. So you'll see on Monday, as you can hear now, this is Sunday and I'm still no better. Um, you know, but I'll keep plodding on. Um, I'll probably be a bit slower, so don't expect me to be getting, hitting any fucking personal bests in the next couple of weeks. But uh, probably after, I'm looking forward to that for after Christmas, because I always feel really recharged after Christmas for, um, you know, I feel recharged I enjoy work a lot more after Christmas as well. Um, I don't know what it is, if it's the new year or you've got a break, but obviously I find I find uh, you know a, a new lease of motivation. So everyone must be feeling this now. You're close to Christmas. Everyone's worked all year with very minimal holidays. I know I've not taken longer than a week off. Um, obviously I've lost time with weather, but. I think in total I haven't had more than two or three week off throughout the year, so that's a lot. That's a lot of a lot of weeks to work. You know, we're talking forty eight plus weeks. You know, worked in a year. Um, so everyone gets that bit of fatigue. I know there's there's a select few out there who work seven days a week, but um, I don't think it's it's healthy. I think you need um, you need that break. You need your weekends. Um, so yeah. How to improve, you know, back to the original topic, film your videos, you know, use some reference points, try and formulate your thoughts if you want to do a bit of a, like a memo vlog, like you can use voice memos on uh, iPhone and stuff like that to do so, that sort of stuff. Um, I saw a fucking contracts manager once using a speech to text fucking uh, app on, a, on his phone to do a... To, to write fucking notes out, uh, a snagging list, I'm sure there was, or I saw an assistant using n speech to text on a snagging list, um, I know the, the technology is not really there when you're trying to do voice memos and stuff, I've used it myself for obviously recording voiceovers, but there's one thing you can, you can do as well if you don't want to write things down, just speak them into your phone, that can be another thing. How effective that is, you know. I, uh, you know, I, I suppose if you you are a manager or something, you've got to take a lot of notes or uh, remember things. You know, that's probably one of them things you've got to do. Luckily, I never want to be in that situation. I, I kind of want to be a bricklayer until I die. Uh, so I love the I love the art of laying bricks. I do. It's so therapeutic. It's 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 it's. I do bricklaying over a lot of things in life. Uh, it's very relaxing. I don't. I tried to a lot of the time when I'm working as well. This is one thing um, I wanted to mention. I try and separate myself from the site. I try and when I'm on when I'm on site or I'm at work, I, I, you know, I'll chat to whoever you know, or the other mainly other bricklayers on site. But I don't try and really get myself involved in anything other than my own work. I just try and zone out and forget where I am. I try not to think about whether I'm going to have it up on a set day. I know some sites are more pushy pushy with the program than others. This side doesn't seem too bad where we're at, but um, we just, you know, I try to zone out and forget where I am and just, just focus on the work, lay the bricks, and um, it makes life, makes fucking your job so much easier. You know, it makes your life so much easier when you, if you zone out. Uh, that's why I like watching this footage so much back, doing the, uh, just running and stuff. It's a very therapeutic um, endeavour when you, if you make it that way, so... Um, so sometimes switch your mind off a little bit. Don't be always thinking. Try to. This is why I try and simplify things the best I can, um, and it stops your head. It stops your head flooding with 
um, you know, with, with stresses and uh, anxieties of stuff, and that all in all slows you down and takes you out of that flow state you can get in when you're running in, uh, getting some work down. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this little um, weekend vlog. I thought I'd just, you know, formulate a few thoughts that I was that were racing through my mind. And um, I'll see you guys probably Tuesday, Wednesday with another video. Obviously, I'm still a bit under the weather, so recording is going to be to a minimum. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please tap the like button. And uh, if you want to keep up to date with, you know, a few episodes a week I bring out, uh, me on site, you know, going through some builds, think about subscribing, and I uh, hope everyone's had a good weekend. I'll see you guys in the next one.